Hey there, I'm Silvio Perez. I'm the founder of adconversion.com. And in this quick video tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to write effective response to search ad copy in three simple steps. My goal with this video is that you're very familiar with what response to search ads is, how to approach the writing process, and really how to avoid some common traps. So with that being said, I'm gonna be leveraging this article as a visual reference throughout this video. So feel free to check it out. I'll have it linked in the description box down below. Okay, let's get started with a simple framework here, the three-part RSA framework for writing your copy. And it's simply put is the goal of headline one is to match intent. The goal of headline two is to differentiate between the other results. And the goal of headline three is to provide a clear call to action. So here's what this looks like in practice for us at Ad Conversion. So if you're not familiar, we teach B2B marketers how to skill paid ads with courses taught by the world's best practitioners for free. So our whole thing is showing up for course related terms, right? So in this case, I'm trying to show up for the keyword B2B Google Ads course. So my H1 here says free B2B Google Ads course. I've matched intent. And it really is that simple, but it's also that easy not to do. So you wanna make sure you match intent with your H1 so that the searcher, as they're skimming through the search results page, you've already answered the question in their mind of, is this relevant for me? So that's what the H1 does here, is it matches intent. The H2 here now differentiates my ad against all the other ads and the organic listings. So here it says free B2B Google Ads course, and then the H2 says no lesson longer than 10 minutes. Now I've created differentiation. So the goal of H1, match intent, the goal of H2, differentiate, and the goal of H3, which is not visible here, is to provide a clear call to action. And whenever you write your, your H3s, always assume they're not visible because Google is always testing different ad formats and layouts. I've seen a lot of times now Google is also only showing the H1 position and they're not even showing the H2 or the H3, which ebbs and flows the importance of this RSA writing framework. Because if you can only count on the H1, you better hope that you count on the point that you've, you've uh, matched the intent and the relevance of what the person's searching for. So let's dive more into uh, responsive search ads so you can walk away really understanding how to put this framework into practice. So let's, I just wanna kinda dive deeper into each point that I just talked about. So the goal of headline one is to match intent. So like I mentioned, if you don't match that intent, you know, when people are searching on Google, think of yourself, you're skimming through the results at lightning speed. And uh, there's a really great quote here by David Ogilvy that I think is relevant here, which is, uh, just to summarize, on the average, five times as many people read the headline as they read the body copy. When you've written your headline, you've spent 80 cents out of your dollar. When it comes to Google Ads, that 80 cents is your headline one position. It is by far the most position of all the positions and the most visible of all the positions within your responsive search ad structure. So make sure you match that intent. The goal of headline two is to differentiate between the other results. I wanna show you some real examples of why this framework is simple but effective in terms of the net outcome. Uh, it's rough out there <laughs> in the search engine results page. It did not take me long to pull an example of people doing this wrong. So here's an example of what not to do. So I searched the keyword SOC2 compliance, which is a very competitive term. And I can see these three companies showed up, SecureFrame, Atera, and WorkViva. And this is what I, I saw. So for example, SecureFrame in the number one position, their H1 here matches search intent. So good job there. But their H2 does not differentiate. They're actually being repetitive here and they're wasting copy and space. And with 30 character headlines, you don't got a lot of room here and there's the margin of error is pretty high. So you can hear, see here they put cost effective SOC 2 compliance. I searched SOC 2 compliance. They mentioned SOC 2 compliance in their H1. They matched my intent. Then they wasted their H2 by reiterating SOC 2 compliance, which doesn't add anything new into the conversation. So that's where they messed up. When we look at Atera, this is even worse. They don't match search intent or differentiate. I'm looking up SOC 2 compliance. I have no idea who Atera is. And they're saying we're officially SOC 2 type certified, like congratulations, but you're spending money on an ad. Uh, to tell me that you're SOC 2 certified now, like how is that relevant to what I need, right? I'm looking for SOC 2 compliance solutions. And then if you look at uh, Work WorkEva here on the bottom, this is even worse. They have a CTA in the, in the H1 position. They're saying talk to an expert, regulatory compliance platform. They don't even mention 
uh, SOC 2 compliance in their ad at all. Uh, so this is like, in terms of an A, B, and C, this is like the, the worst one. So this is why this, this simple framework matters because if they just follow this RSA framework, they would know H1 match intent, H2 differentiate. Just knowing that alone, the end outcome would be much better for the search and you'll differentiate yourself between the other people, right? So moving on, uh, really important to follow this simple framework. It's simple to do, uh, but it's also easy not to do. And like I mentioned, your H3, the goal here is to provide a clear call to action. Nine times out of 10, your H3 is not gonna serve. So just bear in mind that that is the case. And if you had to split test any one variable in your RSA ad, you're better off split testing more of the H1s than the H3s. But it can be as simple as like request a demo, see for yourself, learn more today, uh, whatever the relevant call to action is for your ad. All right, so let's just depict the anatomy of a responsive search ad in more detail here. So you can kind of see how this all comes together now that we've talked about this three-part RSA writing framework. So you have 30 character headlines and 90 character, uh, character descriptions. And you can write up to 15 headlines when you're drafting your responsive search ads. So if you're not familiar, when it comes to responsive search ads, the way it works is Google will mix and match all of your different headlines and all of your dis different descriptions using their machine learning to try to understand what is the optimal combination so that when someone searches a search term and your keyword triggers for it, your ad combines in the most optimal and effective way possible. It sounds amazing in theory, and I really wish it was as good as Google makes it claim to be, but the problem is, is, is uh, legibility, right? So the way Google mixes and matches things, oftentimes, depending on how you write your copy, they'll mix and match things in a way that it's not legibly visible. Like going back to this example of things not to do, the reason SOC 2 compliance showed up in the position two and it was repetitive and not necessary is because they're most likely not pinning any headlines and SOC 2 compliance was eligible to, to appear based on how Google decided to mix and match for secure frames at, which again, if legibility is not optimized, performance will suffer. Right, Because at the end of the day, the, the algorithms are just looking at things in terms of click-through rates and impressions, but it's not taking into consideration, or at least in my understanding experience, it's not taking into consideration effectively enough legibility on how it's actually being displayed to the user. Here too, maybe they have a, a relevant H1 and, and H2, but it didn't show because if they're not pinning positions. And then here, for sure, they're not pinning positions because their CTA showed in the position one when that's the worst place to put your, your CTA, right? And it should be at least in the position three or highlighted in the description. So this is why I highly recommend that you pin your ad positions. So if you're not familiar, you can pin positions in your ad copy by clicking the little pin icon, and then you can pin different spots. So you can see here in this little example, I've got free B2B advertising courses pinned position one. So it's only gonna show in that spot, uh, top by the world's best, pinned to position two, and then start learning today for free. My call to action pinned into position three. So this forces Google to show my ads within these specific positions so that I've optimized for legibility. Now, let's get into if you should even pin headlines and descriptions in Google Ads, because if you've spoken with Google Ads reps, maybe even some Google Ads experts, this might be a little bit of a contradictory piece of advice that you're hearing right now, and I'll explain my rationale. So. My whole thing is legibility, right? Uh, at the end of the day, I want Google to be as incredible as they, as they preach, you know, in terms of they take my ads, my headline combinations, my descriptions, and they, they mix it together and they find this perfect, perfect mix. But in reality, it doesn't work that way. And let me just show you some examples, right? Uh, here's a very well-known brand in the email marketing space, MailChimp. They have email marketing platform in their H1 and email marketing in their H2. I can know for a fact they're not pinning positions and they're spending money on their number one term email marketing, which is not cheap. And this is what's going on, right? Like we don't want this. Here's another example. I searched event hosting platform and this brand popped up and I can see online networking platform in their H1 and online networking events in their H2. Repetitive waste of characters, waste of copy, again, because of not pinning positions. And then finally, this last one here, I searched sales prospecting, Lucia popped up, and uh, 
their positions are just all out of whack. So they have your AI for sales prospecting, which is good, it matches intent. And then they put sales prospecting tips, Lucia. There's no clear point of differentiation here. It's also like the question is phrased incorrectly in terms of the experience. So again, this goes to if you're not controlling positions, you won't be able to control the experience and the legibility. Now, maybe one day this information is no longer relevant because Google has gotten that good. But in the time of this recording, that doesn't seem to be the reality we live in. So what I recommend that you do is you take the best of both worlds. So you take the best of legibility and you take the best of performance through Google's algorithms and you combine them together through strategic pinning. So let me show you what strategic pinning looks like. Strategic pinning is where you're gonna create multiple headline variations for that position and you're gonna pin them to that position. So what this might look like is this. I might write two to three variations of headline one and I will position them in the headline one spot. So you can see here, I have two versions of headline one, free B2B advertising courses, top B2B advertising courses, and I pin them both to headline one. And then I've done the same thing for headline two and the same thing for headline three. By creating two to three variations of headlines per position, it allows you to pin different variations in that slot. So now you're allowing Google to test and mix headlines and descriptions as they see fit, but you're also allowing to guarantee a great user experience and that legibility because you're not letting Google just go crazy and just put your, you know, something that was intended for the, the headline three to be in the headline one and, and, you know, and vice versa. So this is going to be the unlock for you. And what I recommend you do in terms of implementing the three part RSA writing framework that we talked about, right? So I've got three H1s or two to three H1s matching intent, two to three H2s differentiating, and then two to three H3s providing a clear call to action. Okay, moving on. Uh, there's a, there's something that we have to address here, which is ad strength. So if you pin your ad headlines and your descriptions, you are going to get dinged in terms of ad strength, right? So Google does not like people pinning positions. If it was up to Google, you would just give them budget and they would take care of everything and you walk away, right? And when the day comes, please take my money and do that. Cause definitely I want to get more time back, but it's just not where we live today. So should you care about ad strength? Uh, and the, the short answer is no. Like ad strength has no real bearing in terms of uh, deliverability and true performance impact. It's just Google's way of recommending their best practices to you. And then they give you a higher strength score based on how many best practices you follow and then a lower strength score on the, the amount of best practices that you ignore. It's really that simple. It has no bearing on if your ad is gonna be seen on top of Google or not. That is about your ad rank. So there's a few ad strength mis misconceptions to be aware of that I wanna highlight here. Uh, number one, like I mentioned, is ad strength has zero bearing on performance. It's just a predictor of it, right? Google just uses this based on their best practices. They believe if you do these things, they predict and they think you will have more performance. Number two, Having a poor ad strength doesn't mean your ad will actually perform well. Again, it has, it's, just, it's just their recommendations, right? Ad rank is a factor of your max bid, your quality score, and your expected impact of ad extensions. It has nothing to do with ad strength. And then number three, having ad strength, a poor ad strength, doesn't mean your ads won't get impressions. Again, it goes back to ad, that is a factor of ad rank, which mainly comes down to your bid strategy and, and your quality score. So. Don't forget, ultimately, what's going to determine your performance is how well you're doing in terms of ad rank, which has no relevance to ad strength, although the names are similar. I wonder if that was intentional. Uh, so, so with that being said, and if you still don't believe me, uh, rightfully so, you can hear it from Google themselves. If you do pin, you can see this is what they recommend. So they're saying, uh, you know, they're, the reason they, they advise against pinning is they say pinning reduces the overall number of headlines or descriptions that have been shown. Therefore, the less you pin, the more combinations you can create. But remember, it's not necessarily about more, it's about better. So, you know, you want to strategically pin, so you give Google the flexibility to create multiple combinations, but in a smart way. And you can see here, they say it themselves, if you must use pinning, consider having multiple unique assets pinned to the same position, which is exactly what I'm telling you to do with strategic pinning. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, we talked about three simple writing tips for putting responsive search ads 
into practice. I've got some other advanced copy tips for you here around responsive search ads as well uh, that you can check out in the article around dynamic keyword insertion and, uh, and leveraging certain ad extensions. I'll definitely link, the, uh, link this in the description box down below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you wanna learn more about Google Ads, then check out the videos in this playlist that I think you'll find relevant and helpful. And if you wanna learn more about uh, what we do at Ad Conversion and sign up for our free on-demand courses for B2B advertising, then check us out over at adconversion.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.